What a treat we have this weekend. Of course, it is all starting in at Gebeka as we race on the turf this Friday. That is today coming through with the racing from Fairview. And then it is a double header of local racing. And come on a Sunday, it is racing in Peter Maritzburg at the Scottsville Racecourse. Of course, you can always like us on Twitter and WhatsApp. You've seen our handles. And of course, there was just a reminder on the screen as to how you can get hold of us to give us your thoughts. And of course, Betway, I've got that. A T20 final coming through on a Sunday. The proud sponsors of this show, and we look forward to a great, great sporting weekend. Let's talk horse racing, and it is with our panel, a themed panel of Darren Marie and Darren Burrows. We start off with Mr. Burrows. A very good morning to you, sir. Great Wednesday. You're tipping both your good self and Mr. Marie saw to it that we walked away with a profit at Gravel that was on the poly track. Yes, Cecil, just a reminder to everyone, we uh, labelled uh, Fine Admiral, we also labelled Sundance Kid, and we caught the pick six twice as there was a late scratching and the tote favourite one. So it was a very good day. And we back today, we start off in race two. Um, this was peace of mind, my outright first choice. This filly showed good pace last time out. She was just outrun by a very smart filly in Almond C. And I think she's going to improve from that effort. I'll make her the horse to beat over Emblem of the Sun. I think she, the drop-in clip is going to be ideal for this filly. And then you bring me Joy and Jet Set Lady for minor money. Okay, so now we are going to talk about the, the bipod with the Mr. Murray. Very good morning to you. Talking about uh, all the omens pointing to a big run from the five. Peace of mind, informed stable. Lucky owners, Ashwin Reynolds, uh, uh, Dylan uh, Chinsami, and uh, Dylan Chinsami, rather, Mr. Nika, and uh, the NASA boys. What other formula do you need? Yes, um, you know, they expected the improvement from her in her later start, and she did just that. Um, on paper, there's very little separating herself and you bring me joy on their debut start and both have improved uh, substantially since then. Uh, you bring me joy has to give away three kilograms this time out because she was a, a victorious in her later start. Cecil, quit pro quo ran second, close up, and there was a horse called Force 8 who was well beaten, came out and franked the form, I think, by five or six lengths. So I've just gone the wide routes in the opening leg of the... The bar pots, I've gone all of numbers one, two, and five. Better to be said than sorry. Let's confirm those numbers uh, to that uh, bar pot as we get underway with race two at uh, the Big T. And that'll be an off time of uh, 12 or 40. That, of course, is uh, the uh, second of uh, nine races on uh, the program at 17 on uh, the stand side track. No features to speak of, but great racing ahead. Winner number number maiden plate for Phillies and Mayors is race number three. It's over the 11.60. We should be off with that first leg of the place accumulator at a quarter past one. And in spite of the fact that Mr. Marie will be giving us his uh, thoughts on the PA, maybe you can just whet our appetites before we go to Mr. Burrows and then put up that selection. Now, there is a first timer in the colors of LG at South Africa who had a very good winner in the form of La Mohao on a Thursday. That was uh, at uh, Turpentina with Kabila Matsunyane doing a very, very good job indeed. Handier and it's Seem to be the recipe for that uh, fluent uh, victory. Now, I always wonder about Dow Solo. That's your uh, five to two second uh, favorite and uh, becoming a bit of an expensive one to follow. Absolutely, Cecil. Um, if one of the first timers are above average, uh, there's no doubt they can make a winning debut. Unfortunately, there's no comments in the front of uh, the computer form, but I was told during the week, rather not comment than lie. But anyway, Cecil, <laughs> so uh, there's no comment for the six, but with regards to the eight, may need the run. Now, you'll, re you'll know who this dam is, Cecil, of the eight. That um, is the Louvre. That's Louvre. the dam of Trip of Fortune, the great one winning uh, son of Trippy. Oh, of course. Trained by of Fortune, Candace Bass. Candace Bass Robinson yeah. in the colors of uh, the drug and the breeders and owners. That's yeah, the breeders. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, the six is a half sister to Ablon. He won his first two starts. That's Trained correct. by Mark, or uh, uh, full sister, I think. Uh -huh. um, Trained by Mike. Mark the Cock won his first two starts. And then you've got the one and the two. They, the exposed runners, they average to date. But if the first timers aren't fancy, you can see them uh, be competitive over here. So I'm in the dark. I've got numbers one, two, six, and eight. Mr. Burrows, uh, now as far as uh, race uh, number uh, two, three is concerned, that is leg two of the bipod and leg one of uh, the PA. You're a man who has got his ear to the ground. Anything reach your way as far as uh, first timers and uh, their likely uh, performances on debut? 
Well, firstly, it was lovely to meet uh, Scott Gaskell, the owner of Winter in Paris. I met him on Met Day in one of the boxes, and he was actually talking about this filly Winter in Paris um, that I think the full brother or sister sold for in the millions um, recently. But um, this filly cost 500,000 Rand, and they said she's a lovely filly. But as you know, Diane Stenger doesn't usually uh, ready them up to win on debut. I mean, they always improve in their second or third start. So I wouldn't exclude this filly, but um, I would also include a horse like Royana. Now, this is a Silvana out of Encosta de Lago Mare. So there is speed on the dam line. And this could make a winning debut too. So six and eight, the first timers, and then one and two for minor money, the two race horses that have had their chances. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, the uh, place accumulator. We did see Mr. Uh, Marie go wide in that second leg of the bipod, which will be the first leg of the PA. And here he's got all of numbers one, two, six, and eight. Uh, so you two are very much on uh, the same page. That is a PA starting at uh, 1315 with race three. Race number four is due off at a 13.50. We're still in maiden company. This time we've left the juveniles behind. It's a four hospitality bookings. A caller 0 a double one a six eight double one a seven a nine a six. It's over the 11.60 and that's a number to bear in mind as we look forward to Classic Day at the beginning of March. The second leg of the Triple Crown and a Triple Tiara. Okay, we're going to start with you, Mr. Marie. I was just saying I'm trying to make a case of for what I saw on the batting platform that I was on. A Van Mayo or some say Van Major, is at a 19 to 20. And I'm looking at the penultimate leg, or penultimate outing that was behind Jokerman. And up until Saturday, we hadn't seen anything behind Jokerman come through and make an impression. And uh, suddenly we saw Jokerman come and win against some hard knockers. That was the first leg of the PA on Saturday. So maybe that is the credence that uh, makes it a 19 to 20 shot. But looking at the five strewn sky, 28 to 10, to me looks to be the one but that's why you guys get the big bucks you're going to put me right yeah so, so i don't know strewn's car obviously henny sticks with us or, or he rode it on debut mm -hmm. it was a fair enough debut he was staying on in on uh on debut and then around the bend he was given a chance from a wide draw he seemed one pace up the lane but he was staying on um you know that that dam interests me because she's throwing a horse that goes two miles in smoking hot and southern skies who's a listed um uh, picked up black type over 1160 i think it is smoking hot candace dawson yes. and uh, main charles that's correct okay. yeah so i don't know if this is a bone for henny Kraling with a lot of meat on it um you know johan's you gonna give the him, index sir. johan's gonna yeah there's no comment there's yeah. no i'm talking about the jockeys who are away way uh, yeah, all on enforced holidays just yeah. like yesterday but but saying that ryan munger who rides barbaresco later on was available in this race so I don't know if he's a temperamental sort or what, that uh, Henny sticks with him. Uh, but I can see him featuring over here. I like uh, the favorite who you're not uh, really a fan of. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I like the ownership. Yeah. They have uh, brought a lot of life uh, yeah. alongside the uh, the uh, NASA boys. They certainly liven up the race course when their horse has any chance. Eh? Okay, Cecil, there's a comment with regards to the stable companion. We'll need the run. Now, Van Mayel's been disappointing. It's actually his first start ever up the straight. He's having his peak run now. And last time out, he was just overdoing it, I think, over the 1450, and he emptied out. Now, third run off the rest, I've um, got no doubt Serena's going to let him stride. I I'll be shocked if he misses the top two. Um, yeah, obviously, respect for Struan's car. I just don't know his well-being and what, the, like, the circumstances around him. All right, so Mr. Burrows, uh, we've heard comment about the one and action uh, that will need at uh, the run in those lucky colors of uh, the Kirstorm Investments. That is nominee Mr. Kenneth Pillay. Pick six, I know you're going to be giving us uh, your uh, suggestions. What would you go? Do you go wide or do you stick with the money and uh, the top two or maybe even bank like uh, Daryl would suggest? Um, no, I'm not going to bank a Van Mael. Um, he let me down in his penultimate start. Last time at the 1450, I thought it would be ideal uh, no kind of run. Uh, he seems a bit one-paced. So I've got, I'm going to include and action. I liked his debut behind Real Relief. He was staying on eye-catchingly with Pierce Stratum. And I don't know what went wrong in his last two starts, but he has been rested and he could improve. Um, of the rest, in Sky, uh, the drop-back in trip's going to suit. That debut behind Wings Within Me. Now, Wings Within Me's won a couple since then. 
and green fame. Um, I've included this uh, fully as well because on debut there was plenty market support into seven to two. No kind of run. This filly's also rested. So I just don't trust Van Mael. But in saying that, he could be the horse to beat and actions alive and the five and six. One, two, five and six. That would be the safe passenger through for that uh, first leg of the pick six. And that is a race and number four. Difference of opinion. We have uh, confidence that the favourite will get it right. We will see at uh, 13.50 the off time to race number four. On to race number five and a bit of form to work with as far as uh, one of the fancy doors is the seven Volare a Mambo is concerned. Finished behind uh, DeMarco's jet a couple of Sundays back and a uh, runner that was just in front of Volare a Mambo came through and uh, gave what is the nods on favourite a bit of a trouncing yesterday afternoon, the Stu Pedigree runner. As far as uh, race number five, does that uh, performance yesterday give you confidence to banker or you'd still take the cautious route? Uh Cecil, for me, it wasn't a surprise to see Speed Machine win yesterday. I mean, uh, the favourite had its starts of the 1450, mm -hmm. whether it's going to settle, and it had a wide draw. So she just did too much, but she's better than that effort. I've got a preference for the Sukhumvit and Midwinter win form lines over Volari Air Mambo's form lines. But Volari Air Mambo, Cecil, is related to a stayer, an out and out stayer, and she made marked improvement in her second start so she certainly could have come on further since that effort and she's going to love the step up in trip so i'm leaning towards number one though donna mo i don't think the drop to 1200 in her second start did her any favors she's related to mo the man who won twice over a mile three runs back over the mile she was staying on in the western cape her peak run so one from seven for me one from seven, race five doesn't end there, Mr. Burrows. Uh, for you, one up from uh, seven, or is it uh, adding one or two more to possibly uh, fight out that finish? Well, I think Donna made the horse to beat. I'm not sure if you can trust a filly like this, but she's had the two runs on the high fault, and the trip could suit. Um, I think she could be a miler, but if she sees out the 1800, um, I think her form is good enough to win. Now, dangers, Darling Harbour. Now, this filly ran five lengths off bank, beating wings uh, three runs back. She had Sukhumvit ahead of her. Um, that wasn't a bad effort. Her penultimate start, she was just beaten by Martinique. And um, last time out, not striding out. So you can forgive her that last run. She should be competitive. And Valare Mambo, um, going to love the step up and trip. She'll be competitive too. So it's either Donimo or you go one, three, five, and seven. Yes, I do like that form line about the three Darling Harbour that's uh, produced those uh, two winners in the form of uh, Patches of Grey and uh, DeMarco's Jet. And in the uh, first leg of that uh, jackpot for Mr. Burrows, we're looking at uh, one, uh, three, five and seven. And there's a banker whom we'll be touching on as we move on to race number six, the first leg of the second jackpot. Race number six. Uh, I believe uh, Mr. Burrows will be uh, making the final uh, decision at the end of our uh, little chat here. Race number six. We're looking at uh, the odds on favour the seven marauding horde. That uh, first uh, form line has been emphatic emphatically franked, rather. Presley came through to win the horse that was closing in hand over first confirmed that performance when Presley won back to back. And that is uh, Namuhao yesterday winning and taking care of its field with some uh, consummate ease. But that last run of the VAR when uh, we thought uh, this was going to be one of the bankers of the week, it didn't quite uh, work out well. You're going to give a marauding horde another chance, sir? Uh, definitely, because the stand side track 18 is going to suit him down to the ground. Um, on debut, that was an impressive run. Um, I think he's hard to beat, and I have banked him in all my bets. All bets are banked, and we'll confirm that uh, shortly. Mr. Marie, Marauding Horde, forced to do. I don't know if it's in, uh, you can talk about them in the same breath, apart from having met uh, behind a Blackberry Breeze, but uh, old uh, DZ, Jazzy D does hold out a flame that uh, Forced to Do can do him proud. Yeah, Forced to Do got beat by three parts of a length last time out. Um, I said it's going to be closer to four lengths on yeah, Saturday. Yeah, definitely. That's why I um, did the, cover the myself. Thing, 
that was his undoing last time out was the pace of the race. Forster mm -hmm. Du was doing a half pace up front. They crawled and they sprinted for home. This horse was caught flat-footed and he took off in the latter stages. Mm -hmm. If you look at the race, there is pace in the race over Yasesel. There's Judgment Day who's now fitted with blinkers. Remains of the day who also likes to go forward. Dark Silver who went forward in his last start. So I don't think they're going to be crawling this time around. And you have to say that he's going to love the extra. So I think this is a ready-made banker and uh, certainly a... a an inclusion in all your totes, all to comes. Uh, now, Forster De and Irish Love, who could possibly be the improver in the race, finished alongside. And if I'm saying there's going to be four lengths between Forster De and Marauding uh, Horde this time around, I can't really fancy Irish Love's chances. But I think he does have um, scope for further improvements. If he sees out the extra, I think he could be the possible exacter play. Right, uh, short and sweet. Nobody wants to know about anything else but barring number seven, Marauding Horde, in a race and number six. That'll be the first leg of our uh, second jackpot. And I think we've already got a, 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 a springboard to work on that jackpot because we've got that banker. And then you can work out the last uh, three legs races, seven, eight and nine. Right, let's confirm. It is a very confident win selection. Race number six, number seven, Marauding Horde, to get it right at the third time of asking. Okay, so from unexposed sorts, relatively unexposed sorts in the first half of the card, or at least the first six races, race number seven is certainly a far cry from that. It's a race horse known as the Association Merit Rate of 96, and we're looking at an average merit rating of 92. Now, as far as the betting is concerned, Mr. Marie did talk about Barbaresco earlier on when we were talking about a strewn sky racing in those famous songs of the Verner's family. And Barbaresco, 16 to 10, and Ryan Munger soon to leave our shores once everything has been done in the offices. Let's talk about Barbaresco, that second, uh, just over a length behind the main defender. I think for many people, they wouldn't even look or dissect anything else once looking at that. In your case, uh, Barbaresco, tell us more. Yeah, there's no need to look, uh, look past the source Cecil. Um, I still think 16 to 10 represents a lot of value. I actually saw 5 to 2 during the week. Um, way overpriced. And you if you just dissect his later start, Cecil, that was a cracking effort. I don't know if you've seen the photo by JC Photos where Gavin Lorena is busy shouting at um, Calvin Abib because uh, towards the end of the race it got very tight and Gavin said he was nearly being pushed over the rail. So that just says that this horse ran right to the line mm -hmm. last time out in his first start as a gelding. It's going to strip fitter. Now, main defender was a net one, uh, 121 last time out. He was a 91. That's 30 pounds or 15 kilograms. He was only in receipt of two. So he was at 13 kilograms with main defender. And he ran him to a length. Third in that race was Hot Ruby, who was three lengths behind him. Came out, second. And, came out and ran second, has now got a rating of 116. That's debatable. But there's no doubt this is, is well ahead of the handicapper. And I can't see Silent War giving him six and a half kilograms. So for me, if all goes well and he just reproduces his last start, he's basically a penalty kick. Right, Mr. Burrows, it uh, sounds like Mr. Marie, he purposely ignored my question when he says he saw 5 to 2 in the week and it's now 16 to 10, so he obviously took care of that. Or maybe it's your good self who's uh, taking care of that uh, 5 to 2 that was available on Barbaresco. Yes, um, actually there was a 28 to 10, 3 to 1 available. <laughs> I and uh, yeah, we all jumped in there. But yes. uh, no, I think uh, this is, you can smile all the way to the bank after this race because I think he's an absolute blinder. Um, just strictly on that last run when stepped up in trip, first run as a golding. Um, that was an impressive run because he pushed main defender all the way to the line. And with 55 kilos, he's well ahead of the handicapper. So a bank in all bets, Barbaresco. Finish and clear. Let's just confirm. Barbaresco, 16 at 10, given uh, the very glowing uh, uh, comments from both our esteemed uh, panelists, is uh, 16 and 10, big, big value on uh, the weekend. Barbaresco, jump in, boys, because uh, come uh, 15 at 35 Saturday at 17, I think we'll be talking more about 6 to 10. That is race number seven, a marriage rate at 96, and that'll be over the mile.